Are you wondering about monovision? Well, stick around because that's what we are getting into today. Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Saya Nagori. I'm a board certified ophthalmologist. And if you wanna know how to keep your eyes and vision healthy, be sure to subscribe to the channel below. All right, now let's dive into monovision. So as we age, specifically in our early to mid forties, our eyes lose the ability to focus up close. Now the medical term for this is something called presbyopia, but why does this matter? It matters because if you're someone who has had pretty good vision before, you are now going to need to keep a pair of reading glasses pretty handy on you. Or maybe you're someone who has had good distance vision in glasses, but now you might need to switch into a progressive lens or take your glasses off to read, depending on your prescription. Unfortunately, there is no escaping presbyopia. It's a normal part of the aging process and it's gonna happen to every single one of us. But monovision can help you and it may not be as annoying as you think. So what is monovision? Monovision is an alternative for someone who does not want to wear bifocal glasses or progressive glasses, or does not want to carry their reading glasses around. In monovision, an ophthalmologist will aim to correct one eye for distance and the other eye for near vision. This is why it's called monovision, mono standing for one. One eye sees at distance, one eye sees at near. So this way, instead of constantly switching between distance glasses and reading glasses or having to put your reading glasses on or using a bifocal lens, your brain will learn to adapt so that one eye sees distance and one eye sees near. Now this sounds great, right? But not everyone can adjust to monovision. Even though it's a simple concept, some people can initially find it really unnatural, they can find it very frustrating, and they may even feel disoriented. For people who are lucky, they can adjust in a week or two weeks, and some people just may never be able to adjust to monovision at all. Now, if you're someone who's trying monovision in cataract surgery and you don't happen to adjust, we're gonna talk about what you can do if that does happen to you. Now, before we get to what you can do if monovision does not work out for you, I wanna first talk about how you can optimize your chances of success at monovision. And if you try it and hate it, what to do when you go back. To optimize success, first you need to ask yourself and discuss this with your doctor if you are even a good candidate for this. Not everyone's job or lifestyle is a really good fit for monovision. Monovision works best for people who don't mind a very slight trade-off in visual sharpness for the convenience of being able to see well at different distances. But monovision, of course, is not going to be a good fit for everyone. If you're someone who requires sharp depth perception for activities like night driving, sports, or highly detailed work like surgery, it may not feel good enough. Some people may also struggle with the visual imbalances that happen between their eyes and then they can never fully adjust to it. That's why you have to test monovision before committing to it in something like surgery. So this is the second part to improve your chances at success. You wanna try monovision first. And the easiest and safest way to try it first before having it surgically done for something like cataract surgery is to try it in contact lenses. Your doctor will give you one contact lens that'll correct you for near and then the other for distance. If it feels comfortable, it's a good sign that you'll be able to tolerate monovision cataract surgery. But if it feels strange or difficult, you should give yourself a little bit of time. If it still doesn't work after a couple weeks, you may not wanna opt for this in cataract surgery. Typically in monovision, your dominant eye will be corrected for distance and your non-dominant eye will be corrected for near. If you're unsure of which is your dominant eye, there's another video on the channel where you can check that out. Now, what if you're someone who isn't ready for cataract surgery? You're someone in your 40s and you don't wanna wear reading glasses. What you can do is still just use those same contact lenses, but use them as a long-term solution. For some patients who've had good distance vision their entire life, they may only need to use one contact lens. And this contact lens would be in the non-dominant eye, correcting them for near vision, since their distance vision would be good in their dominant eye. There's also something called mini monovision. In this situation, the difference between the two eyes is just very slight so that it allows your brain to adapt. In this situation, you might be able to tolerate that a lot better and it can help give you some mid-range vision, but it may not give you that really powerful reading prescription that you need. In those situations, like reading a menu in a dimly lit restaurant, 
you might need to carry a pair of reading glasses with you, but from a daily task perspective, mini monovision may work out for you. So if you tolerate monovision, this is something you can certainly ask your doctor about. If you're someone who needs to have cataract surgery, monovision is certainly an option you should discuss with your doctor. But overall, how successful is it? So most people actually adapt pretty well, and the success rates range anywhere from 70 to 85%. But now what if you fall into the category that just can't adjust? Let's say you did the contact lens trial, you thought it was going to work, you still went to cataract surgery, and now you're not really adjusting to monovision. Some signs of not being able to adjust to monovision after surgery is struggling with night vision, depth perception, or just feeling like the world looks funny through differently corrected eyes. So if you find it unbearable, don't panic. There are ways to go back. Now, of course, if you're in contact lenses, you can just go back to what you were wearing, or you can also ask your doctor about multifocal contact lenses. But if you've had something more permanent like laser vision correction or cataract surgery, there are other solutions. After cataract surgery, if you're not adjusting to monovision, you can ask for a laser correction of one of the eyes. You may not need a full reversal, but maybe just a slight modification to get you into that mini monovision range. This is a good option for cataract surgery patients because something like a lens exchange, which means actually taking the IOL out of the eye and going back to the operating room is a pretty big procedure compared to just having a laser done to correct the vision. So is monovision worth trying? I think so. I'm in my 40s and it's what I've been doing to myself so that I don't have to wear reading glasses. So far, I've been able to adjust, but as my reading gets weaker and weaker, we'll see how it goes. Remember, for some people, the trade-offs like reduced depth perception, occasional blur, or a sense of visual imbalance can make it really frustrating. So if you're considering monovision, the best approach is to try it out in contact lenses first. Hope you found this helpful. Remember to hit the subscribe button below and I'll see you next time.